want to read the, uh, the comments from Senator Bob Corker. I'm sure you've seen him over a week ago about the president saying that the president has not yet been able to dis demonstrate the stability nor some of the competence that he needs to, to demonstrate in order to be successful. He also said that he's not sure that the president understands the character of this nation. Um, do you have any response to that from a Republican senator? Uh, I think that's a ridiculous and outrageous claim and doesn't dignify a response from this podium. Major. Just to follow up on Jonathan's question, since the president is going full court press uh, threatening a shutdown over the funding of the wall, does that mean he is abandoning any efforts to negotiate with Mexico, any payments for construction of the wall? Uh, I certainly don't think any efforts have been abandoned. And uh, official happy birthday. So, Hold on one second. Uh, you mentioned in the opening remarks, honorable and victory, as the president did in Afghanistan. Can you describe for the American people what both of those words, words mean to the president? Uh, honorable and victory. What does it look like? What will it, what does that mean? Um, I, I think when he spoke um, on Monday, he laid out what the top priority was in this process, and that's making Americans safe and protecting the American people. Um, and moving forward with this strategy and making sure that Afghanistan is never able to be used as a haven to attack the United States. I think those are certainly uh, clear goals and part of that process. Does that mean, therefore, that U.S. military personnel will be there as long as there is any type of terrorist activity or cell in Afghanistan or Pakistan? Uh, Look, I think when it comes to the strategy in Afghanistan, they're going to be focused on the conditions on the ground, which will be determined uh, by the generals and the military on the ground, and certainly uh, through the Department of Defense and General Mattis and his team, and not arbitrary timetables. And he'll be the one that can lay out those specifics for you and what that looks like. I'm just asking, because you mentioned terrorism, you mentioned threats. There are several different networks there, Akani, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS. Mm -hmm. Is the priority of this administration and the strategy that it will pursue until it is accomplished to eliminate all of those terrorist cells in either Afghanistan and Pakistan, and only then can victory be achieved and that be described as honorable. I'm not going to get down into that. I think that's a question that's, again, best answered by General Mattis uh, and the Department of Defense. But what I can tell you is that the ultimate goal is a peaceful settlement between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban that protects our interests and protects American lives. That's the focus, and I'll let uh, Secretary Mattis determine and lay that out for you more specifically. Sure. Sarah, I've well got a follow-up on uh, Major about Afghanistan. So first of all, if what we've been doing in Afghanistan has been working, then why are we still there? And if it hasn't been working, what are we planning to be doing differently moving forward? I think, uh, again, one of the things that is different is the decision and whether or not when and how to withdraw would be based on conditions on the ground, not arbitrary timetables, and making sure that we have an integrated strategy that puts um, all of our American power, diplomatic, economic, and military, in a way that's sustainable and cost-effective, uh, and making sure we have that integrated process is a big key to this strategy. Adding troops is just I, prolonging the withdrawal. Is that what that is? <laughs> no. Again, we're, we're not doing this based on a timetable, but conditions on the ground and making sure that we're protecting American lives uh, and defeating terrorists. Uh, I, I think that it's very clear when the president laid that out on Monday. Um, my second Sarah. question. Hold on. Wait. Sarah. I had a second question on that. Whatever the final objective is, is it really worth the reported trillion dollars that it would cost? Isn't there anything better we might be able to spend that on? I don't think you can put a price tag on American lives. Sir, on uh, one more question on Afghanistan. The president talked about putting more pressure on Pakistan to play a constructive role, but he also talked about having a new closer strategic partnership with India, which is uh, Pakistan's prime antagonist. Why does the president think drawing closer to India will prompt the Pakistanis to play a more constructive role rather than becoming more defensive and um, playing more into a strategy of uh, giving harbor to extremists. So we think it's important that there's a regional approach, um, and part of that is developing and strengthening that relationship and partnership with India. They've been making important contributions towards Afghanistan's democracy, democracy and their stability, and we think it's important to continue that effort. <laughs> Sarah. Hey, Sarah, that, on this threat of the government shutdown, if Congress doesn't secure funding for this wall, how is that not a concession from this White House that Mexico isn't actually going to pay for this wall and American taxpayers will? 
But again, this is something the president's committed to. He's committed to protecting American lives and doing that through the border wall is something that's important. It's a priority and we're moving forward with it. But Noah. He's, but he's not saying that Mexico is going to pay for it. He hasn't now. said they're not either. Noah. They have. On the, they have. Um, Thank you. I think we've had enough outbursts on, on that side. On the, the uh, past. <laughs> president's ban on transgender service in the military, how close is the White House to sending guidance to the Pentagon on that? And the policy itself, how much discretion will be given to the Pentagon on implementing it? Uh, when we have an announcement on that, I'll let you know, and we'll be sure to answer those questions at that time. Uh, yeah, um, two questions. Uh, one, given the rift um, with the uh, President and the Republican leaders in Congress, um, is, is there an elevated role right now for Vice President Pence having been in Congress, having kind of speaking both languages uh, in terms of working with Congress, going into negotiating the budget and so forth? Uh, the Vice President plays a, a key and uh, pivotal role in the administration in the White House. I think uh, he's certainly always going to be uh, an important part of the process of moving legislation forward uh, on whatever that circumstance is or whatever the matter is. Uh, he is probably one of the best advocates here at the White House and certainly uh, somebody that the President has a great deal of trust in and um, is happy to have him on his team. Is that role elevated though, considering that there seems to be a rift between uh, I think that the vice president is uh, the second in command, so it's a pretty high role where where he is, and certainly again a, a key member of this administration, uh, and somebody who plays a pivotal role every single day in the White House, no matter what the circumstances are. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and, and that is, there was a um, there's been some increased uh, criticism from conservatives about. Uh, Commissioner Koskinen at IRS uh, after an IG report came out that highlighted that there were 213 employees that were rehired uh, after committing offenses and including some crimes uh, for termination. And um, I was wondering um, if, if you could revisit uh, why Commissioner Koskinen is still part of the administration and if the President has any plans uh, putting in place to replace him when his term is up in November. When we uh, have personnel announcement on that front, I'll certainly let you know. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. Questions on uh, pardons, if I could. One on uh, Sheriff Arpaio. Is the president seeking a recommendation from the pardon attorney or the deputy attorney general, or is he asking for an FBI background check uh, in his consideration of that pardon? Uh, I would imagine they go through the thorough and uh, standard process, and when we have an announcement on what that decision is after that's completed, we'll let you know. Yeah. And more, more broadly, uh, beyond Arpaio, there are 2,200 other pardon applications pending. Does the, the President have any pardon policy, pardon philosophy, any particular way that he would uh, like to use his pardon power during his term in office? I haven't had a specific conversation with him about that, but I know um, that his the White House counsel plays a big role in that and would certainly be involved in that process and any deliberations on that. Yeah. Alexis. Yeah. Um, uh, the President has made clear that uh, in the past that he wanted to get started on tax reform, but we haven't heard him say that much about it. Um, uh, the Politico talked to a White House correspondent and published this week that the President has an imminent announcement about tax reform. Can you describe how he wants to kick off the fall campaign to get that accomplished this year? And are we going to hear from him this week, next week? What would you expect? Uh, tax relief and the focus on tax relief for middle class Americans is a huge priority for this administration and certainly going to be a big focus in the fall. And we're going to look at a lot of different ways in which to talk about that and present that to the American people working with Congress uh, to make sure that that happens. And we'll keep you guys posted when there are specific announcements. I think uh, that you can expect some of that to take place uh, in the very short order, probably next week and, and following through to the fall. It's, it's customary for uh, presidents to get annual uh, physicals, physical exams at Walter Reed. The president, I think, had last released information about his medical condition last fall during the campaign. Can you tell us whether the president intends to utilize the federal facilities at Walter Reed this year to get uh, a physical and then release that information to the public? I'll let you know if that's going to happen. Trey. President Trump said, if we have to close down our government, we're building that wall. Does he stand by that statement? 
Uh, look, I think the president's been clear that this is a priority. Protecting American citizens is a priority, uh, something he's committed to. And we're going to, as I've said multiple times today, he's committed to seeing that through. Is it a plan to force a government shutdown to get the wall built? I think I've answered this question several times. Zeke. Um, two questions for you. Uh, first, uh, the president on, uh, at the rally in Phoenix mentioned uh, yeah, it was, that he was he seemed to inclined to be pulling the U.S. out of uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement. Um, his comments came after the first round of NAFTA renegotiation talks last week. So were those comments informed by the status of those negotiations last week here in Washington? Uh, when he said he was, he, that was his prediction that he was going to be pulling the U.S. out? Now, the president's being kept uh, up to date on those negotiations. I think uh, he's certainly been clear about how he feels about NAFTA and making sure that we get the best deal for the American people. He's committed to that. We'll see how the negotiations go and then go from there. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good night.